All right, all right, all right. So we're starting again with uh, Ara Pulido, uh, de uh, developer advocate from Datadog with the Kubernetes um, Gateway API. We are after Ara, we're going to have a 30 minutes break, and we're going to restart again at 3:30. Uh, but for now, Ara, will you join me? Give it up for Ara, please. Thanks, thanks, William. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, so yes, um, I'm Ara Pulido. Um, thanks, thanks for having me, and and thanks for the organizers for this amazing conference. It's super well run. The venue, it's super cool. It's like a club. Come on, this is very. Hack, hacker club 90s kind of feeling, which is great. Uh, but today I'm going to be talking about Kubernetes Gateway API, which I consider it to be the new way to travel north-south. Um, so d just, just some words about Datadog. It's a platform that helps companies improve observability and security of their infra and applications. And that, of course, includes um, Kubernetes as a platform uh, but also the, the workloads, the applications that you run on, on top. We actually have a brand new office in Amsterdam. They're very keen to host uh, community events. So if you have a meetup that you want to have a space uh, to run, just ping me and I'll put you in contact with the right people. Uh, but today, north-south traffic. What is north-south traffic? And I wanted to call this talk north-south and also to explain a little bit this term, which not everybody knows, and I didn't know, and when the first time that I saw north-south traffic, I was so confused about it. Um, what is north-south traffic? It's just external traffic into your cluster. Um, I don't know we, why we come up with terms like that, but that's basically north-south. Um, as opposed to west-east traffic, which basically means uh, the tracking in between the services into your cluster. So, this is more or less how it looks like north-south. Uh, but because uh, of the slice format, uh, most of my graphs are going to look like this, but uh, uh, always north-south. Um, good. Uh, so how do we do north-south traffic in Kubernetes? So uh, usually what we do, uh, we have to get a load balancer to get traffic in. And um, if you're in a public cloud, so if you're running Chiki or AKS, AKS and others, uh, there is uh, all these clouds provide controllers. So when you create a service, and Salman explained a little bit this morning uh, all about this, so the thanks, thanks to that I can be a little bit faster on this. Uh, if you do a type load, load balancer service, um, the cloud internally is going to have a controller that is going to provision a load, an actual load balancer for you. Um, and that's how you get traffic in your class if you're in a public cloud. If you're, not, if you're running your own infrastructure, you can actually write your own controller to do the same thing. But uh, what happens uh, in reality is that you may have more than one service that you need to get traffic from, from external. Um, and having a single load balancer per service is not a great idea because they are very expensive. Uh, because they are scarce. They actually give you an IP that is routable uh, on the internet, and we know that there are not that many of those, so they get pretty expensive. So what we do in Kubernetes up until now is that we create these ingress objects. And basically an ingress object, uh, it's an abstraction of things like reverse proxies, for example, L7 re reverse proxies, so you can, you are able to uh, route traffic based on HTTP um, application level. So you can say things like, if the traffic is coming to corporate.com, route the traffic to my service called corporate, but it says shop.corporate.com, uh, route the traffic uh, to, to service e-commerce. And that's, that's usually what we do. And uh, this is how the ingress object looks like. Um, it's basically that. There are a couple of more things you can do, things like TLS termination and ex put it there. Uh, but it's very, very simple. It's a very simple spec. It's part of the networking core Kubernetes API, so very official. It's GA. Um, and, but but the, it's, it's super simple. It's like basically you create rules uh, based on, the, for example, the host. And you can do reroutes based, for example, on URL prefixes. Um, again, you can do a little bit more than that with ingress, but that's, that's more or less uh, what, you, what you can do. Uh, in this example, 
If the traffic goes to foobad.com slash foo, it routes the traffic to service one on port 4200. Uh, if it does a slash bar, it goes to service to port 80. And that's very simple to understand. It's, it's a very, very good abstraction, to be honest. Um, so we're good, yeah? We're right, we, 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 are, we, we can finish this talk today. Um, not, not quite. Um, if we step back a little bit, uh, we know that in Kubernetes there is this reconciliation loop. We have a, a set of binaries called controllers that basically what they do this watching for changes on your cluster for specific resources and do something about it. And uh, there is a component in Kubernetes called the controller manager that has a set of controllers. You have controllers for replica sets, for deployments, for all the things, and those come uh, from Kubernetes itself, so from the Kubernetes distribution itself. Um, the ingress object is not like this. The ingress is a, is a core Kubernetes uh, API, but it doesn't come with a default controller. You have to deploy it on your cluster externally. So you only, you only get the API, but know the controller uh, with it. So what happens is that uh, many options, I just put here four of them, but basically any open source project or company that they are on the realm of, uh, I don't know, API gateways, or reverse proxies, or all that area, uh, probably are going to implement one of these um, ingress controllers. And this should be fine. Like the, the API, its core is there, so you should be able to move from one to another, and everything should be fine. The problem is that uh, the ingress resource is pretty simple. And you may want to do things, very classic things that you do with reverse proxies, like uh, shifting the traffic based on weight. Like if you want to do canaries or A-B testing or things like that, you may want to say, okay, send 90% of the traffic to the v first version of my application and 10% of the traffic to um, the second version. But the ingress object doesn't allow for this. Um, but because it feels like it should, all these um, implementations started to actually accept him to do these things in several ways. Again, the ingress object only allows for many, like very small number of things. But uh, here comes Nginx and says, okay, my users wants to do canaries. So if you want to do canaries using the ingress object, you're able to hack it a little bit with annotations. So we are going to provide you with annotations that our ingress controller understands, and you're able to do these things that you want to do. That's great, but uh, then comes Contour and said, okay, if with our ingress controller, you're able to do anything that you want to do with ingress, but if you want to do something more, uh, you're going to use these CRDs um, that we came up with uh, instead. Um, same with Ambassador, they came up with different CRDs, and uh, Con with a plugin uh, that is not even part of the open source uh, release. So you can start seeing the problem already. And this is not only happens at an L7 um, reverse proxy level. It, this is where the problem is really, really apparent, uh, but it also happens um, at an L4. So, because the spec of service in Kubernetes only allows to say type load balancer and nothing else, cloud providers also do these things because they say, okay, I can provision for you a load balancer, but you actually have three types of load balancers. Which one do you want? So because you cannot say that, uh, you, for example, in this case, this is an example with GKE, uh, you can create an annotation to get, for example, an internal uh, load balancer. So we have a problem uh, in Kubernetes, and this is why um, they came up with, with Gateway API. So Gateway API to the rescue three, about three years ago, so it took a while uh, until this was more or less usable. Uh, they, a lot of people in the networking space in Kubernetes coming from Google, coming from Contour, with all the same people who created the problem acknowledged that they had created a problem and they started trying to fix it. So they decided that they wanted to build a set of new Kubernetes APIs to deploy L4 and L7 routing. So both, both levels, not only L7. 
And from the very beginning, they, they had this, this North Star to focus on while designing it. And this North Star was like the gateway API is going to be designed to be portable, meaning that if you have a resource that you have created in a controller, you can move to a different controller and it's going to continue. It's very simple, but it's clear that we need a little bit more. Uh, so we are going to build it so you can express all your routing needs. But it's also going to be extensible because we know that at some point uh, we cannot design everything for now and the future. So we need to design it in a way that it can be extended in the, f in the future. And, and also role-oriented um, with the idea that because we are going to create so many different, uh, different resources, each of those resources are going to be designed for a, a specific persona in your cluster. So not all your users, all your, the users of your cluster are going to be using the, the same type of resources. Good, um, so without further ado, this is the most important resources that you're going to find on the Gateway API, not the only ones, uh, but basically it's very simple. Gateway classes, gateways and routes, and there are many types of, of routes. Again, this is L4 and L7, so we have TCP routes, UDP routes, um, ERPC routes, um, but the most mature, obviously, and the, the, the really the first one that was designed is the one that we are going to be seeing today in the talk, which is HTTP routes, uh, which you can consider really the, the replacement for, for the ingress object. Um, so how does it look like? Um, the gateway class, uh, and thinking about this role-oriented model, uh, is going to be created by infra providers and nobody else. Uh, so if, for example, in this case, if you're running uh, in this example, if you're running a key cluster with gateway API, uh, which already you can do, uh, they are going to have these gateway classes for you. So instead of having to create an annotation for the type of load balancer that you need, uh, they are going to have uh, those created for you. Uh, you can see there is a typo, external. This is actually on GKE, so if you create a GKE cluster, uh, you can see that there is a typo on their definition of gateway class, at least that's time I check, which I, I find it very funny. Um, but then once you have those gateway classes that you can use um, as a cluster operator or as an application developer, if your policy allows for that, again, this is the different resources allows for uh, a very specific RBAC rules to control who can do what, uh, you're able to create those load balancers by creating gateways on your, on your cluster. And you have to specify basically a, a gateway class. If you do this in GKE, again, I mentioned GKE a lot uh, because they have a very, very uh, mature implementation, um, not like other, other clouds at this point. Uh, but today we are going to do a lot of uh, examples on HTTP routes, uh, which I think uh, are the most important ones for most people, and most people are application developers. Um, I, don't ha I didn't have time to do demos. I only have one demo for today, and it's, and it's recorded. I have actually three examples. I'm going to show two, one of them with one demo. I didn't have time while I was rehearsing this talk. I was already over the time, so I decided to reduce a lot. Um, but you can run uh, everything, all the examples on a kind cluster. If you clone that repo, you have all the, all the examples. So you don't need anything else. On those examples, I'm using Contour as the um, controller. And the reason why I use contr Contour is because it's open source. And also, they, uh, they have a very, very uh, up-to-date implementation as well. Um, we are going to be using an application, so this is the app um, for the example. So it has a front end and a couple of, of services behind, discounts and, and, and ads, um, backed up by a database. Uh, this is how it looks like if you run the demo. Uh, you can see it. Uh, so this is just an e-commerce example application. Uh, on the left, you see what the discount service is going to bring back, which is a, a discount. And on the right-hand side, you can see the, the ads that you get. Um, 
And the reason why it it's, um, just says one point something is to distinguish two versions, because we are going to do routing of traffic. Uh, so you will see that you can get version one in blue or version two in red. And that way, you're, be, you're going to be able um, actual visually how the traffic is being rerouted. And everything, by the way, it's, uh, uh, if you clone the repo, all this application is already uh, instrumented with open telemetry. So if you use an open telemetry backend, uh, you can actual see, actually see the, how the traffic is, is actually being routed uh, without um, having to, to do all the tests. Uh, so you can use it, it's all, all open telemetry, you can use it with whatever backend. Uh, okay, so let's see a couple of examples. The first one is something very simple that you usually do with ingress. Is like you say with a particular host, if uh, the URL is slash foo, go here, slash var, go there. Um, this already you can do with ingress, so there's nothing special here. Uh, but the problem is that if you do that with uh, some frameworks, uh, some web frameworks like Rails, for example, they will get confused because they expect the application to be on the root URL. So what you do usually on, on reverse proxy is rewriting that URL. And that's something that all these implementations can do, but the ingress object doesn't have an abstraction for that. And you want to do that, rewriting that URL, so your application believes that it's running on the root. So you can do this uh, with the gateway API specification. So the first thing we need is a gateway and a listener, in this case, HTTP. And one of the things that, from a security model point of view in gateway API, is that um, because gateways may be created by operators in a different namespace, uh, they need to say, OK, I'm going to allow this gateway to be used by routes that are being created on a specific namespaces. Obviously, you can allow all your cluster if you want, but you can specify only certain namespaces, in this case, the ones that match this label um, can use the gateway. Uh, then you need a couple of HTTP routes. Um, this is how it looks like. This is very similar to Ingress, as I said. Um, you can do path prefix. So anything a slash foo goes to front end on namespace one, anything a slash bar to front end on namespace two. But this is the interesting bit. The interesting bit is that things, interesting things like URL rewrites now are part of the spec, meaning that you write it the same way no matter the controller that you're using. So once we do that, uh, you can see that if it's you go to a slash uh, food goes to version one, slash bar goes to version two, and uh, the application continues working. And the reason why it continues working, if we check the trace that is being created, you can see that the application thinks that that is coming from, from the root URL. OK, so uh, the, another example, and we are going to see a, a, a recorded demo for this one. Uh, you can see, in this case, uh, the example that we started with, something that we want to do, and Ingress didn't allow us to do it, but the implementations uh, did, uh, which is uh, routing traffic by weight. So in this case, we want to route traffic 80% of the traffic to our first version and 20% of the traffic to the second version. And in this case, they have a new object called the reference grant because I'm saying that a route is going to uh, cross boundaries uh, to the next to the next name space. In order to do that, uh, you can do that with nginx and ingress already without any permission. So unless you have network policies or things like that, uh, it allows you uh, to do that. In this case, they thought, okay, if you want to do that using the gateway API as the owner of namespace two, you are going to accept. Uh, traffic coming from routes. Uh, so the way we are going to do that is first we create the HTTP route uh, that has two backends, uh, one in namespace one, one in namespace two. And you can see that um, routing traffic by weight, um, it's 
in the spec. So it's part of the spec, something, it's not an annotation, it's not another object that we don't know it's coming from, uh, it's actually part, part of the spec. So something that you can do in the spec. And then we have the reference grant. So on namespace2, we are going to create a reference grant that basically says, I'm going to accept routes coming from namespace1 to send traffic to my um, backend services. Okay, so let's see the demo. Let's play this. Um, so basically, this is the same thing that we saw. So we are creating first the reference grant, and uh, we are going to also create the routes, in this case, the route. And once we do that, uh, if we start refreshing the page, uh, we are going to get 80% of the times version one and 20% of the time version two. So I fast forward this a lot of times, and um, after a while, um, I can use uh, these open telemetry traces to think about whether the gateway API and the controller are doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so if we check the traces for the ad service, uh, we can see visually in purple is version 1.0, in blue is, is 2.0, you can see visually more or less 80% um, of the traffic is going to the first version and 20% of the traffic is going to the second version. Um, and you can also see some latency issues on the second version that probably you need to, to check out. Okay, cool. Um, so that was uh, an example of you, what you can do, but I wanted to talk about as well um, on a little bit of, of some of the design decisions on the Gateway API that I found them very, very cool. So we mentioned at the beginning that uh, it's designed to be portable, so you, you can move things from controller to controller and they continue working as expected. How do they do that? How they, I, as an implementator of, of one of these um, controllers, how do I make sure that it's going to be portable? So. Basically, they offer support levels for features. They, the Gateway API have a set of core features, and those core features mean that you, if you want to be compliant, you have, because they have a set of compliance tests, you have to implement everything on the core level um, following the spec. So if, if you don't want to be compliant, that's fine, but if you want to, uh, that's how you do it. Then there are a set of extender extended features, meaning that it's optional for you um, as, an, as an implementation to implement this set of features, but if you do, um, you have to do so by following the spec. You cannot create annotations or tricks, you have to follow the spec. But they understand as well that they might be things that are very implementation specific uh, because these things are very broad, some not, for example, in the case of, of gateway classes, not all clouds are going to have the same, the same set of resources. So there are things that you can implement that are specific to your, to, to your implementation, but you have to do so following also some rules. And the other funny thing about the design uh, of, of the gateway API is that they have a different release model. So we are used to, um, APIs in Kubernetes to be part of the release of Kubernetes. In this case, they decided early on that they were going to be released as CRDs. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not an official API. It's an official API. It's gateway networking, kates.io. But they decided early on that because there is not going to be a default controller part of Kubernetes, it's going to be always external. There is no that need of type that with specific Kubernetes um, release. And also, CRDs are so mature now that people know how to deploy them, how to maintain them. So they decided that this is what's going to be the way to, to release the Gateway API. But because they're official, they have to have some rules. And this is uh, the way they manage those, um, those releases. So first of all, you have API versions. Um, in this case, we have uh, V1, beta 1. Some resources are already beta. Uh, some resources are still V1, alpha 2. We only saw three of them. There are many of those. Um, and uh, once uh, nothing is GA yet, 
but it's going to be probably pretty soon, at least for, for three of, of them. Um, but inside those resources, they also have standard features and experimental features. And standard features meaning that they are mature enough that they believe that it, they are not going to change that much. Obviously, it's a beta object, so it still can change a little bit, but they're, they're pretty confident that they got it right. But then they have experimental features. Things are, you have to know that they are going to be changing. And anything in alpha is, everything is experimental. So they get all of that and they, they release uh, versions of the gateway API. The latest one is 0 0 0.06, actually one, um, but um, more or less 0 0.6, the only thing it changes a little bit of, of compliance tests. And they basically release a version based on what they have. But then you have, as a, as a consumer of the Gateway API, you have two ways of getting, two channels to get that, because you, it's not part of Kubernetes release. So you get it through these uh, channels, uh, depending on what you need and the level of maturity that you require for your clusters. Uh, so if you get 0 0.6.0 0 from the standard channel, you're only going to get v1 beta 1 resources and only uh, standard features of those resources. And actually, on the demo, if you, if you clone that repo, in the demo, we are using experimental feature, URL rewrite is an experimental feature, part of HTTP route, which is a, a v1 beta 1. So what I did is to download um, 0 0.6.0 from the experimental channel in which you get everything. You get v1 beta 1 resources, also alpha, alpha 2 resources, and, but you get experimental features as well. Okay, so coming to the end. Um, so just a recap, uh, Gateway API is a, new, it's a new Kubernetes API extension to standardize vendor implementations for both L4 and L7. It's an official Kubernetes API, but it's based on CRD and this may confuse people at the, at the beginning, but I believe that it's, it's, be, it's going to become a pattern. So I'm, they are the first ones, but I believe more APIs will be, will be written this way. And if you use it, watch out for two things, support levels, um, if you're choosing an implementation, and, and also the maturity level. So what type of uh, experimentation you, you allow in your, in your cluster. And, and that's it, thank you very much. Uh, that dog is hiring, so if you see anything on our careers page that looks interesting, let, let us know. And that's, that's the repo in case you missed it. Thanks. So thank, uh, thank you very much, Ara. It was brilliant. Uh, do we have any questions for Ara? Yes, we do. Two questions, actually. The first one is, is there a way to define the custom traffic split, like based not on the weight, but on the request itself, like headers? Yes. And maybe yes. some external decision logic. Engine. Yes. Oh, everything that you can think, at least the, the, the things that we're all low, already allowed to do with ingress on the hacky way, on the, all of that, uh, obviously, they, they had that as, as, the, as the base to define. So yes, headers is definitely one, one of them. Okay. And the second question, is there like version compatibility metrics between gateway API versions and Kubernetes cluster versions? Uh, again, it's a CRD, so the, it's if you can use whatever, whatever version you, you're in. Okay. Uh, you have, it's, I think it's more important that to, to think about whether that those implementations um, have any problem with one version of the other. I noticed one thing regarding uh, the CRDs that you mentioned. Basically, uh, the first time I saw the the first time I saw the uh, API uh, was that um, in order to inclu include it into the cluster, you had to actually install these manifests to make the CRD accessible. Uh, 
and now you, you mentioned that there are actually no plans to introduce this into the standard Kubernetes API. Um, who is governing uh, this uh, gateway API then? Is this CNCF or? It's the, the SIG, uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. This is part of SIG networking. So the same people who are uh, ma managing the ingress, for example, API. So this is completely official part of SIG networking. Um, and, and one of the reasons uh, I think why it took a little bit longer uh, is because they had to come up with a good set of conformance tests, a good set of release model, because they are a little bit pioneering on, on how to release this. But again, I really believe that uh, there are going to be more uh, SIGs creating, creating new um, API extensions this way. Because again, if it's th there is no uh, controller that is based that is part of, of uh, Kubernetes, like like Gateway API in this case, uh, there's really no need to tie that to to um, to a release model, and it gives them a lot of flexibility. They 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 can have a different pace of release if they if they need to. So one different. thing that is important <laughs> is that once it becomes GA, and probably the first uh, resources that are going to be GA are the f the same ones that are uh, beta right now, which are gateway, gateway class, and, and HTTP routes. Uh, reference grant, I think, is also beta at this point. Um, once it gets to GA, it's not, it's not changing. So um, that's why it's taking a while to, to, to get to that level, because they want to make sure that um, they are not going to say a month later, oh my god, <laughs> now we are GA and we want to change it. So they, they, they won't change the, the resource. Thank you very much, Ara. Um, we, are, um, we are going to have a little break now uh, until 3.30. At 3.30, we are going to have Christina Devochko. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Pretty, pretty sure not. Uh, with, managed services, with managed Kubernetes service. So you're free for half an hour. <laughs> Thank you.